I'm Sasha Hopkins. And I'm McKenna Kuhn. Fashion was the name of the game last Thursday. Recycled fashion, that is. The OSU Fashion Organization held its 21st annual Recycled Fashion Show in the MU Ballroom. Its theme was Dumpsters to Diamonds, and models walked the runway in about 70 outfits made from recycled materials for a crowd of more than 500 people. Kayla Haar of the Daily Barometer reports that designers, who could come from any major at OSU, were allowed to submit up to three outfits made from recycled materials, spending no more than $5 on each. At the end of the show, faculty and graduate students announced the winners for the best outfits in four categories. Most creative use of material for a dress made from football and turf, which went to Megan Amadon. Most innovative design, which Ashley Bates won. Most ready-to-wear outfit going to Lauren Grabner and Taya Mateos. And best in show went to Jesse Curry. Oregon State students may have enjoyed the extra sleep the two-hour delay on, on February 25th allowed them, but for numerous employees of organizations like Dixon Recreation Center, the Valley Library, and the Memorial Union, the delay meant a loss of work hours. The, the Daily Brahma reports that while most Oregon State University employees, other than es essential personnel, were asked to begin their shift late February 25th in anticipation of an inclement weather, some of those employees were paid for the hours missed while others were not. Classified employees are usually paid hourly and are not non-exempt from overtime, meaning that if they work more than 40 hours in one week, Oh. They will receive overtime pay. Unclassified employees are paid on salary and are exempt from receiving overtime pay. According to the inclement weather matrix, unclassified employees who are <laughs> exempt from overtime are not required to use vacation leave or lose pay for an absence of less than four hours. Certified employees, however, must use vacation time to cover the hours missed during a delay. The inclement weather matrix and further information about the university's policy regarding classified and unclassified employees can be found at the Office of Human Resources website, which is listed below. Does where you live make you fat? That's the question that Dr. Susan Partington will be addressing on Wednesday, March 9th. The University of West Virginia professor is bringing her lecture on environmental influences on eating behavior and weight to room 208 of the MU from 2 p.m. to 3 p.m. and all students are invited to attend for free. Partington recently received a 4.7 million dollar grant to research and prevent childhood obesity. For more information, go to the OSU website. OSU baseball is starting their season off right. After winning Game 1, 14-3, the Beavers kept their foot on the accelerator and completed a four-game sweep of visiting Hartford, beating the American East Conference schools twice on Saturday and twice on Sunday by a combined score of 52-7. to When asked what the Beavers did right, sophomore catcher Andrew Suzak told the Daily Barometer, quote, It's pretty evident. We had good, we had good at bats and we pitched all well, all weekend, end quote. Head coach Pat Casey felt that the recent boom in production at the plate could partially be attributed to the arms the Beavs have faced. Casey pointed out that the Beavs haven't been perfect. There are still some things the Beavers need to tune up if they want to compete in the Pac-10. He referenced base running, two-strike approaches, pitch selection, and the bullpen's performance as areas in need of improvement. As part of the Daily Barometer's five-part segment on 25 influential people at OSU, three students and two administrators were highlighted in today's school newspaper. The first influential person on campus is ASOSU President Andrew Struthers, who is a fifth-year senior and double majoring in finance and business information systems. The second student is Craig Bitteman, the Memorial Union Programs Council President. Bitteman also is part of the Student Incidental Fees Committee and discusses how to distribute student funds. Eric Alexander, the Director of Student Leadership and Involvement, was the third influential person. Alexander, who is not a student, 
oversees the OSU's Greek Life, Student Clubs, the Community Service Center, Student Sustainability Center, and Memorial Union Program Council. The fourth person was OSU grad and ASOSU student advocate Christian Mateus, who coordinates the internship program. The final influential person of the program uh, of, the, of the day is the student as the Dean of Student Life, Mamta Akapati. According to the Daily Barometer, Akapati does everything from managing student groups and administrative interface with ASOSU to making sure the campus is welcoming to veteran students and honoring the unique needs of international students. The five-part series of Influential People will continue all week.